So this is the last day of our um, online workshop and our first speaker this afternoon is Milena Herring. Hi, so thanks very much for the invitation and uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak. So um, this is uh, going to be about a joint work with Benjamin Mill and Henry Seed. and we're going to be studying uh, stability of toric tension bundles. So let me first remind you what it means for a vector bundle to be stable. So if X is a projective variety and O of C is an ample line bundle on it, and um, let's say the dimension of X is N. So then if you have a torsion free sheet from such a variety, then the slope of E with respect to this ample polarization is defined to be as the intersection of the first term class with E with C to the N minus one over the rank of E. And we say that E is stable if and only if for every subsheaf of E the, um, of smaller rank, the slope is less of F is less than the slope of E. And we say it's semi-stable if you have um, less than or equal to it. So the slope of F is less than or equal to the slope of E for every subsheaf. Okay, so the question we want to discuss in this talk is uh, let X be a smooth uh, projective variety and let L be an ample line bundle on X. When is the tangent bundle um, to the variety stable with respect to this ample line bundle? And um, so here is some motivation that relates this um, to this workshop. So, um, First motivation is when X is Fano and smooth, then Lutke and Kobayashi show that there exists a Keller, if there exists a Keller Einstein metric on X, then TX must be fully stable. So this means that it's a direct sum of stables with identical slope. And Matsushima showed that um, uh, when X is the blow up of two points on P2, then um, TX is fully stable, but there need not, there is no Taylor Einstein method. So this is just a necessary condition. And um, yeah, by Jen, Donald, and Sun, the existence of a Taylor Einstein metric is equivalent to um, X being K fully stable. So yeah, so this is the <laughs> only relation I'm afraid this talk has to the main topic of this conference. But um, so it's the stability of the tangent bundle gives you a necessary criterion for X to be K fully stable. Okay, the second motivation comes from a theorem of um, Hedekus, Solar, Conde, and Puma. And basically, what they say is if X is a final variety and you know that TX is unstable, then there exists a foliation. Okay, so um, let me remind you, we've seen this before in this conference. Um, if E is a vector bundle, then the harder narrow sim Hunt filtration of E is defined to be a filtration. And so in our case, it's of the tangent bundle. Um, and what we want is that the consecutive quotients are semi-stable and the slopes are of these quotients are just decreasing. And to find the first non-trivial element in this filtration, what you do is you look um, at all the subsheets of maximal slope and take among them the one of maximal rank. And uh, then, um, so this is sort of how you can start building this filtration. So what Kibiko, Solakonde, and Tumash proved is that if X is a normal complex q of variety, and you have L1 up to L dimension X minus one ample line bundles, then you can also define a stability with respect to these line bundles, not by intersecting the C to the N of one line bundle, but um, the corresponding device of C1 up to the dimension X minus one. Um, so this gives you a generalization sort of of the stability I told you. So about yeah, you can just think of the original stability and then you just have one line bundle. And we take the hard and narrow simple filtration of the tangent bundle with respect to this um, stability condition. And then um, we've seen that um, then the slopes of the consecutive quotients is decreasing. 
since we are on a bundle variety, we know that the slope of the tangent bundle must be positive. And so therefore there exists some K such that at some point, um, this slopes goes from positive to negative. I mean, um, uh, the, the K might not exist actually. So they might all be positive, but at least you know that this is positive and then you define K so that if it goes to negative, it's from um, where the slope goes from positive to negative and otherwise your K is just um, the length of the hardener arisen Hans equation. Okay, and so then what they show is that then there exists a commutative diagram of dominant rational map such that if X in X is a general point um, and F of X is the closure of the QI fiber to X. So here are my maps. So I have an quotient uh, X to Q1, X to Q2, and so on, X to QK. And um, these uh, the fibers um, of these quotients are rationally connected. And the um, tangent bundle, the tangent bundle at the fiber at this point X is exactly this um, element of the Hardenaris and Hans equation. So, um, so you get a lot of um, foliations and maps and um, structures through that. Okay. So um, uh, a student of Kibikos has proved also a converse in the Tori case. So um, first let's define if X and Y are projective normal varieties and F from X to Y is a dominant rational map. Then we say that F is a rational contraction if there exists a resolution of F where X prime is smooth and projective and mu is rational and F prime lower star O of E prime is OX for all mu exceptional E um, divisors, effective divisors E prime on X prime. And so what Pan says is that if you start with a rational contraction away from a toric variety and you assume that Z is normal and the dimension of Z is less than the dimension of X, then um, there is a movable curve class, or again, you can say there, uh, um, yeah, so a movable curve class, which um, can be written as an as intersection of, um, of ample divisors, such that Px is not stable, and the relative tangent chief of this map is, um, is the a term in the hadanara simhal situation of Px. And uh, so this curve class is going to be a class that is going to be contracted by this map. Okay. okay, so the known cases where we understand um, when um, the tangent bundle is um, uh, stable or not, as follows. So, um, so there was interested earlier because we had this connection to k poly stability. Um, so, if X is a del Pezzo surface, then this implies that Px must be stable. And for smooth Fano three fold, Stephens um, had classified which tangent bundles are stable and which are not in 96. And um, so, yeah, so an Indian group has also been studying this question. So, this was Day, Gank, and Potter in 18, and the sculptor Day and Khan, they have been uh, discussing the stability of some toric um, Fano four-fold. And William Reynolds, um, my student, so he has now a program where he can compute um, this and he can classify all the smooth toric Fano four-folds and five-folds. Um, uh, he can tell you whether they have a tangent, tan stable tangent bundle or not. Okay. Okay, so here's our theorem. So um, if X is a smooth toric surface or a smooth toric variety of Picard rank two, then there exists a line bundle L on X such that the tangent bundle is stable with respect to L, even only if X is a blow up of projective space. 
And um, I should say that this case of Picard rank two was also independently um, studied by this Gupta, Jay, and Khan. Okay, so you wonder, is this true also in, in higher Picard rank, but this is uh, not the case. So if you have, um, um, if you look at the Toric Fano three fault, so Watanabe and Watanabe have this nice picture of um, all Toric Fano three faults and how they are related amongst each other. And then, um, yeah, again, I mean, thanks to William Reynolds, he um, computed all of the three faults which are stable. Well, and I mean, we knew it basically because Jasmine had done it already. But um, so um, Tx is stable uh, for this um, Tori Klein of three fold, but you see that it doesn't allow a map to P3. So in general, for higher Picard rank, the expression is clearly much more interesting and um, yeah. Okay, so let me tell you what our results are in a little bit more detail. So if we, um, now we have our toric variety X or arbitrary variety X, and we want to understand for which polarizations L is the tangent bundle stable with respect to that polarization. So we can look here at the set of um, stab of X, which are all the ample divisors such that TX is stable with respect to that ample divisor. And similarly, semi-stable are all the ample divisors such that T of X is semi-stable with respect to this um, ample divisor. And then for the smooth toric surfaces, we can say exactly um, uh, how, how the stable, um, well, one, the stable locus is not empty. So if you have X is equal to P2, I think how my, my, my apple pen has refused to work. Okay, so when M, when X is equal to P2, then um, this is exactly the, the case when the um, apple code is equal to the stable um, subset. And when X is equal to P1 times P1, then um, this means that we have a semi-stable bundle but we don't have any stable bundle, uh, any bundle with respect to which the tangent bundle is stable. Um, when we have an iterated blow up of P2, but X is not equal to P2, then there exists some polarizations for which, with respect to which the tangent bundle is not stable, but there also exist polarizations with respect to which the tangent bundle is stable. And if X is not an iterated blow up of P2, then uh, this is equivalent to being that there are, the tangent bundle is not stable with respect to any polarization. So I should mention that for smooth toric surfaces, um, you have a very nice um, theorem that they are all iterated blow ups of P2 or of some Hilzebrock surface. So they're sort of very special. Okay. So um, to say the theorem for um, Picard rank two. So if X is a toric variety of Picard rank two, then um, Kleinschmidt has shown that every such smooth toric variety must be of this form. It's um, of the form. Um, uh, it's um, the projectivization of a direct sum of line bundles on projective space. Okay, so and um, we um, can reorder uh, our numbers so that um, zero is less than or equal to a one is less than or equal to a r, and um, then we see that if a1 up to AR is just equal to zero. This is equivalent to saying that X is um, the product of PS times PR. In that case, PX is semi-stable with respect to the 
story anti-canonical polarization. And there are no stable bundles from that. And if um, the last uh, AR is greater than or equal to one, then um, we have polarizations with respect to which the tangent bundle is stable, even only if the tuple A1 up to AR is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then claimed Frankfurt has also shown this is equivalent to being X being a blow up of um, projective space. Okay, so we see these do not admit, in most cases, these do not admit um, uh, polarization with respect to which the tangent bundle is stable. Okay, so here in this case, we can describe the stable locus exactly. So if X is um, the projectivization of um, this um, direct sum of line bundles, uh, which where we know that we have some stable polarization, so we know it must be of the form OPS to the R direct sum OPS of one. Then Px is semi-stable with respect to um, a line bundle. So in that case, the Picard group of X is generated by um, uh, the Sear bundle of this bundle. And it is generated by the pullback of the um, O of one of the project uh, structure morphism. So O of one is on Px. I don't know what my... Ah, okay. Yeah, now I can have my, my somehow. I'm sorry, I don't have a marker. Um, okay, so um, and then we can describe exactly when um for which uh um such ample line bundles um with lambda and u greater than zero, the tangent bundle is going to be stable. So um, yeah, so this is when zero is less than mu since then lambda gamma. And so what is gamma? Gamma is the unique positive root of this polynomial here, P of S, um, yeah, which is designed to be the sum, ne negative the sum, Q equal to zero to S minus one, R plus S minus one to Q, X to the Q plus S times R plus one over R, R plus S minus one over S, X to the S. Okay, so in that case, we can describe exactly the locus where we have um, stable bundles, uh, where, where the tangent bundle is stable. So, are there any questions so far about the statements of the theorem? Anything? Okay, so all of this is based on a combinatorial criterion for the tangent bundles to be stable with respect to an ample polarization for a toric variety. So let me remind you, a toric variety, the definition is that it's an equivariant compactification of the algebraic torus, C star to the n. So this means that the torus it's going to act on itself, and it's, you also want it to act on the variety extending the action on itself. And um, such a torus comes with a character lattice. So the, this is uh, the lattice of all characters, which are the homomorphism from C star to the n to C star. And so this is just isomorphic to Z to the n. And if you have a any line bundle on D, but particularly an ample one, you can associate to D a lattice polytope, PD, which lives in the lattice of characters. And um, the global sections of the polytope, um, sorry, the global sections of a, the divisor have a nice uh, interpretation in terms of the lattice points of the polytope. So it's the direct sum over all lattice points in the polytope, um, C times the character. So now what we want to do is we want to, I, I, I can tell you if, if you give me a toric variety and an ample divisor D with a polytope corresponding to it, I can tell you whether the tangent bundle is stable with respect to that polytope. 
that divide them. Okay, so in order to give the condition, we need to introduce one more um, uh, notion. So um, a facet of the polytope is a co-dimension one phase. So we see a facet here. So here's a facet. And then each facet of a polytope comes with a normal vector. So it's orthogonal to the facet. And um, it is, um, you, we just we used to say it should be inward facing into the polytope. Um, okay. And so now here is the condition for um, Tx to be semi stable or stable with respect to the polarization corresponding to this polytope. So if X is toric and D is ample, and we take F is the set of all faces of the corresponding lattice polytope, then the tangent bundle is stable with respect to um, the ample line bundle O of D. If for all subsets S of facets, um, such that the dimension of the vector space spanned by the corresponding inner normals um, is strictly less than the dimension of x. Okay, so I take a subset of facets and I make sure that the dimension of the inner normals is really, uh, the space, space spanned by them is less than um, the dimension of the original polytope. Then I want that one over this dimension times the sum of the volumes of all of these facets, that should be less than one over the dimension of the original variety times um, the sum of the volumes of all facets of T. And the um, expression on the right-hand side of this inequality is exactly the slope of the tangent bundle. Okay, so, um, this is fairly easy to check. So um, let me give you an example. So if X is, for example, projective space, and we take the ample line bundle OPN of one, then the corresponding lattice polytope is going to be the um, just the n simplex, which is the convex pole from zero e one up to e n. And this n simplex has exactly n plus one facets, and each of these has um, lattice volume one. So yeah, I should have said this more clearly. So when we talk about the volume of um, polytope, we always talk about the lattice volume. So this is sort of normalized that the simplex has volume one and not um, one over n plus volume. Okay, so then in this case, the right hand side of the equation is one over the dimension of X times the sum over the facets of T of the volume of F. And so we have N plus one facets and we have dimension N. So the slope of the tangent bundle of TN is N plus one over N. And on the other hand, if you have the simplex, then the vectors orthogonal to the facets of the simplex are exactly e1 up to en and then minus e1 minus and so on minus en and if s is a proper subset of the facets um, then uh, the dimension of the space spanned by these is exactly um, the number of vectors in it uh, or the number of facets so ds is always the number of um, elements in s and so what we see that if ds is strictly less than n, then the left-hand side of our um, inequality, which was one over ds times the sum over the volumes of f is exactly n over n, so this is one and it's less than um, the slope of the tension volume. So using this criterion, um, we see it um, quite easily. Um, I should have said a little bit where this criterion is coming from. So basically, um, what we're using here is um, Piaggio's classification of toric vector bundles. And um, in some sense, 
this is then not really new. So um, Trutzen and Sharp, for example, have studied the stability and Kiyachko already also um, has similar equations just for P2, but I mean, it's that they sort of generalize. And um, the idea is that um, the um, subset of um, passes, um, you can associate to them a subsheaf uh, or sub bundle in that case of the tangent bundle. And um, yeah, and, and so this, uh, this uh, what you see on the left hand side of this inequality is exactly um, the slope of, um, well, it's not exactly, <laughs> but yeah, but it is related to the slope of that subject. So, um, okay, yeah, so this, this is what enters into this um, um, equation. Um, okay, and so um, another important ingredient here is um, a theorem by Greg, Greg Kebekus and Pijanel, and they show that if X is a Q factorial variety and you have a birational morphism from X prime to X, then if you know that there exists a polarization such that the tangent bundle is stable with respect to that polarization on X, you know, there must also exist a polarization on X prime, such that the tangent bundle to X prime is um, stable with respect to that polarization. And so what this means is that if X to PN is a birational morphism, then, um, and we know that um, um, the tangent bundle on Pn, we just have seen that, right? That it is uh, stable with respect to Opn of one. Then we know that there must exist some ample B on X such that the tangent bundle is stable with respect to B. Okay, so this does um, one part of our theorem. Um, so, um, So um, the other part is uh, um, to show that if you um, not a blow up of um, P2, um, then you cannot be stable. So I, that is not the theorem for the Twerk surfaces. And so for that, what we first had to do is actually characterize all the Twerk surfaces that cannot be a blow up of P2. And, uh, in some sense, it's a natural, or maybe it's not a natural question to ask, but like we couldn't find this in the lab literature. So here is the characterization. So in general, um, to a toric variety, um, you can view the toric variety in terms of a span. And if you um, take a toric surface and an ample line bundle on it, and the associated polytope, and you take the inner normals of that, and then in two dimensions, that, that gives you already the structure of the fan. And so that is the corresponding fan of the um, toric variety. So this is what I mean with the sigma. So I start with a smooth toric surface with the fan sigma. Then X, the surface is not an iterated blow up of P2 or P1 times P1. If and only if there are integers a greater than or equal to c, which strictly, this is important, strictly greater than e plus one, greater than or equal to one, such that after an appropriate choice of basis for n, sigma contains these red rays. So it must contain all the red rays. So one, zero, zero, one, minus one, a, minus one, c, zero, minus one, one, minus e. And all the other rays must be contained in these two blue shaded cones. So if you, yeah, so if you have a smooth toric surface, which is not a blow of P2 or P1, 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 then it must look like this. Okay, so now if you start with this, then you can look at the, um, 
at what a polytope which has these rays as inner normals must look like. And so I shaded the corresponding face um, facets with a corresponding ray. So this is what like uh, an, an arbitrary polytope looks like. And basically what we show is um, that um, the, if you take as a subset of your facets, the purple and the, um, the brown one, so zero one and zero minus one, um, then the volume of those two facets is bigger than the sum of the volumes of the, these two facets. And that is exactly what you have to show to show that um, the, um, this, the um, bundle corresponding to zero one and zero minus one is destabilizing. And so uh, I'm really sorry, I'm, I'm already done. I think I went too fast in the beginning. I'm usually writing my talks. <laughs> I think I, I went too uh, uh, fast because I'm not used to doing slide talks. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. That's all right. Does anyone have any questions? Or let's, uh, let's first thank uh, Milena. Any questions? I do have a question. 